Hi there, and a very warm welcome to this week's Quickish Tip. I think this is going to be a longer one. Since we are going to take a look at Octane's 2024 Alpha compositing overhaul. So I looked at this before for my own sake and I found it rather complicated to adjust from the old system to the new one. And when there is the final release, I guess a lot of people will have the same problem. So the overhaul is really good in its feature set and people don't want to miss out on that, I think. So I thought I make this tutorial to show you the new features and the new feature set and how to use them inside of the nodes of Octane in Cinema 4D. Wow, quite a mouthful. Of course, this is alpha build still, so expect quite some bugs and some quirky behavior here. Without further ado now, let's get started. Let me show you what we're going to do today. If you are a member of this channel for a longer period, you already remember this scene and that we used it before. And I decided for that for two reasons. What we are going to do today also has to do with render layers, what we used this scene before. And maybe it's an easier way to use that if you already know what we are going to do. And second, since the last time we used that, I have a Patreon now where I share all my scenes that I use in my tutorials, including this one. And since it wasn't shared before, you can gain access to it if you become a Patreon and support me there. But let's now move over to the star of the show, which are the render AOV nodes here and what we're going to do with them. Since I want this to be useful for the most of you, let's explain that from scratch. So basically what you see here is a compositing context inside of Octane. So we have the object separated from the background and what we can do with that is for example, get the shadows, the reflections and a colored background in here that we can change right in the application. So we can change the color of the background, for example, to a more vibrant purple or change the opacity of the reflection here. So if I go to the opacity, we can adjust and tweak it. You can see that a lot of times if I do something like that, it triggers a re-render and I blame that on the alpha state of the software since this shouldn't be the case in the later versions. If you are familiar with the old system and you go to your nodes and scroll down here, you can see that a lot more nodes have been added to the context here. So there's a lot more things you can do with it. We're not going to go over all of them here, but I will introduce you to the way this new system is working so you can have your fun with it and try out all the different nodes that are there. So let's jump over to a new scene and build this up from scratch. First of all, let's orient ourselves inside of the scene. So what I'm going to do is jump outside of the camera so we can see the scene and it's very view objects here. So basically it's just our object and a large backdrop. And if we go back inside of our camera, the object becomes our main protagonist again. What we want to do for our object is to cut it out against the background. So we have an alpha for our object, and then a separate layer for our shadows as well as the reflections. So we can exchange the background for a solid color. To do that, we are going to apply render layers. Now I have made a tutorial about this before, you can find it in the upper right corner, but fear not, we are also going to do that here. To make this work and cut out our object against the backdrop, we need an octane object tag. So what we can do is right click, extensions, octane, and then octane object tag here. In the attributes of the tag, let's go to the object layer and set another ID. So everything from scratch has the ID of one. We want to differentiate our object from that by going with a ID of two. Now nothing has changed and this is because we haven't set our render layers yet. So let's go to the render settings here to the render AUV group, enable them and then twirl down the render layer. And this is the default setting and it's already set to two. So we just need to enable it and there's our alpha, as easy as that. Now that we've done that, we can have a look at our nodes. So let's close down the render settings here and go over to the node editor. 
Obviously, this is not a material nodes tutorial. So what we are going to do is get a look at the render AOVs. Also, if we for one second open our render settings again, this is the AOV groups here we are talking about. Basically, this is Octane's compositing context node menu. So I could add an input here, but also I can close that down, click on the node and have the same setup here. Let's actually create an input and see what happens. So when we create an input, there's a new node showing up, AOV group, as well as an output here. If we click on that output, nothing is showing up because we don't feed anything to that node right now. Obviously, we can create multiple outputs so we can add more inputs and get more outputs here. But for the ease of use and the ease of overview, I'm reducting that output here again. So we are working just with one and therefore have a better overview over the following examples. What you need to know about the new system is that it's all layer based. So you can layer your effects and your render passes on top of each other. But not only that, it is layers within layers. So this also reminds me of Inception. So we Inception layering our system here or the baseline test from Blade Runner 2049 where he goes on about links within links and interlinked. So this is basically for those nerds of you who know those films. There's also a film rule that says show don't tell. So this is what we're going to do now. So let's create a node here by going to add node and then why not use the beauty straight ahead. Now, for some reason, this creates a second layer, but this is coming in handy in a second. So we'll leave it in there. And we can see now we have the same display for both of our channels. All right, with our node here, let's explore our options by going to our nodes, scroll down here. And for example, take the first option here, which is an image AV. So let's do this. And this lets us load an image. So let's load our trusted UV map here real quick. Yes. And then just plug it in. And you can now see that we loaded our UV map in the background since our object here, our beauty has an alpha and this is recognized by the layers. But since we want to go for a solid color, let's do this instead by going with the solid color node and plug this in. This is white from scratch, but we want to make it a darker greenish tone, for example. So let's do this by going for a 50% value and maybe 25 in saturation and then go for maybe 200. Yeah, this is preference. You can do what you want with it. So to explain the layering a bit more, this is evaluated from the bottom to the top. So when we add one more layer here, we can, for example, add a vignette. So let's search for the vignette here and there it is. So we drag that out and plug it in here to the above layer. And we can see, yes, this is creating a vignette. It can be really strong also. Just to explain the layering a little bit. So if we want the vignette just on our background and the foreground to not be affected, what we need to do is just to reverse those knobs. So now the background is vignetted and then on top there's our beauty layer with the alpha. So far so good and so far so understandable. So let's layer up our shadows and reflections here. So instead of the vignette, and I really recommend to name those nodes, otherwise you will be lost in no time. We want to actually have the shadow here. We can do that in here also by going to change that into a render AV. So this one here. And then what we want to do, we want to load the render layer and then the render layer shadows. Here we go. Now we only see the shadows and this is because this shadow layer is just black and white and it gives us the shadow in front of the white. If you have keen eyes, you've already spotted there are blending settings. So if I roll that down, you can see now there's a blend mode and it's set to normal. This is what was used here, for example, that left us our object with the alpha. 
But since this doesn't have an alpha, we need to multiply it over the solid color here. So let's do this and go with multiply. And there we have our shadows on top of our background color. In the next step, let's also add our reflection. And this is very similar. So I'm going to duplicate this node here, add another layer to our output here. And then we need to move that to the topmost and then this in between. Now our shadow is getting darker because we are multiplying the shadow twice. But what we actually want to do, instead of a shadow layer, we were going to the reflection layer and add this. Now you can see the opposite is happening. Everything is getting dark. And this is because the reflection layer needs to be added. So we need to go into that mode here and set it to add. And this is our basic compositing done. But you have seen that we did a lot more to our end result than just that. Because there is a lot more that this is capable of. Small interlude here, so you might have noticed that as soon as we dragged in the shadow and the reflection, there are the shadow and reflection passes turning up. So you don't have to go into your render AOV groups into the AOV manager and activate them since they get activated as soon as you use them in any context in the system. So this might be the end of a little happy quick tip, but since this is this channel and I'm always looking for providing more value to you, this is just the beginning. So let's say the reflection is too strong for our taste here. In the old system, there were sliders for that. So if we were going into a group or the node here, Somewhere there was a slider with the opacity to be found, and this is not longer the case. And this is where I stumbled in the past before I learned the strength of the new system. I thought, what is this? It is not capable of doing opacities. This must be an error. But there's a way to deal with that, and I'm going to show you that next. And this is exactly where the layers within layers come in. So let's make a little bit of space for our reflection, which we want to tone down. So right now this is added and we want to get the reflectiveness down. So we have to add an opacity. Now, how to do that is a little bit awkward, but if you get the concept, it becomes normal. What we need to do is get a layer group in here. So instead of using the output here directly, we are going to use layers again. Now this gets us back to square one of our blending mode. And this is because the blending mode is housed in our initial node, but we now need to move that to our layer group and therefore get the add effect here. So now we are back to our layering as it was before, but to get the opacity in here, we need to add another layer and then we find the opacity effect. And this is down here, adjust opacity. So we just layering the adjust opacity of the layer or layers. We want the opacity to be changed on. And then we can pipe all of that into the layer where it actually matters. So when we do that and change the opacity, you can see this is now working. Nice. So let's keep that as 0.5. And you can see it's now half as bright as it was before. Also, naming your nodes is always a good idea, especially if all your nodes are going to be named AOV output. You lose overview real quick. I think you have the understanding of the basics now. So let's go a little bit more wild. For example, let's get a bloom effect on the comp here. So let's add just another layer and then search for the bloom, add bloom, here we go. And then just add that on top. And basically what the bloom is doing, it has a strength slider. So this is basically an opacity. So if we move it up to one, we just see the bloom. And if we would set it to zero, we just see the result without the bloom. If you're used to the bloom in the post effects here, there is a cutoff. This is missing here. So you don't have a cutoff in the bloom here. And this is because it can be done with other nodes. 
So first of all, what I want to do is add just the bloom to the main object, not the background. This means we have to add a layer group. We can just copy that one here and then add our beauty together with our bloom into the layer here it was before. Now this is looking strange and this is because we copied our layer group here and it's already set to add, so we have to set it back to normal. So right now what this allows us to do is just bloom whatever comes in here, which is our beauty. So we just can bloom that here. And now you can see this is looking a little bit strange. This however is not what we set out to do. We set out to do to have a cut off bloom effect. Actually we want to get our beauty back into the layer as it was before. And then we want to take the same beauty and do something else with it. Basically, and let's just keep that on top. What we want to do is add a layer here and we want to add a black colored background. So we copy that layer here and set it to be black and override that here. So we can see what we are doing here. Since this is totally opaque, we don't see any layers below that. So now if we go to our output and actually this is again the naming problem. So let's call this bloom and let's call this color. Here we go. What we want to do is go to the bloom parameters and set the strength to one. So we only have the bloom. And then what we want to do is get our cutoff ready. To do that, we need to bring something in between the beauty and the layer. For now, I found the best way to do that is to use the custom curve here. So let's bring that out. And we need another layer yet again. So add a layer and then we move the bloom up here. So we have the black background, then we add the beauty. And then we want to have the custom curve because this is our cutoff. Because the bloom is taking effect afterwards. And we already need that to be cut off beforehand. So what we want to do here is move that in as far as you like. So only the bright parts are visible anymore. So if we take the bloom out for a second, you can see this leaves us only with the bright parts and those are then getting bloomed. Now the last thing we need to do is to make this additive because we already have everything that we need below that. And by just adding that on top, we now have a bloom layer with a cutoff on top of our beauty. Obviously, if that's not strong enough for you, we can add yet another layer and then just adjust the brightness. And therefore, there's another node here, adjust brightness, plug that in and for example, set it to two or even to five to make it really obvious. And now we have some bloom on top of our beauty that's really bright. As you can see, those nodes have multiplied like rabbits and I think you get it now. But let me actually show you two more things that are really nice in this build. Let's say we have managed to set up everything to our liking, but the centerpiece here is a little bit too bright. And for some reason, we want to use comp tools to darken it down. And you know where this leads, we need another layer group. So let's copy this one here and set it back from add to normal, pipe our object in here and then go to the layer four and exchange it. Now to make it darker, what we want to do is get a brightness load, for example, and set this to our second layer. Now this is the brightness of five, so everything gets extremely bright. We don't want that, we want it darker. So let's actually go with a value of 0.75. So everything gets darker. Basically when I enable and disable it, you can roughly see the difference. As I just said, we just want to have the inner part here darker and not the whole object. So we need a way to mask our object. And this is where the mask with cryptomat comes in. So let's drag this out here and we need yet another layer. So here we go. And pipe in the cryptomat as the topmost one. Now the cryptomat here has a difference and this is that it's the only channel that needs set up beforehand. 
So let's do this real quick by going to the Render AOV Groups, Render AOV Manager, double click on Cryptomat, and then what we need to do is choose the Cryptomat that we want. And for me, this is the Geometry Node name here. So let's do this. Also, let's do this inside of the node here by going down here, Geometry Node Name, and you can see our whole object vanishes. And this is because we don't have the mats applied right now. To find out about the mats, what we need to do is select our object here, go into the Object Manager, hit S to find the active object, and then scroll that down. So we have our actual geometry because Octane sees this name and not the name of the modifier. So what we want to do is copy that out and paste it in here. And now you can see this object is now masked from the rest. To get back the object here with its normal intensity, normal brightness, you guessed it, we need more layers. So let's add another layer, move those layers on top, since our object needs to come in beneath those layers to take effect. So let's just take our object here and move it back in. And now we have created ourselves a setup where we can adjust the brightness of just the inner part. Isn't that nice? I think for a lot of you, I kept the best thing as the last point here. So let's do this. Let's make this more presentable by making the background color a bit darker and also go to the opacity of the reflection and make it brighter again. And there you can see that the actual reflection is rather noisy. The big reveal here is that we actually have integrated the open image denoiser now, and this can serve on a layer basis as well. Since the rest of the image is fairly noise free, we just want to apply it to the reflection. So let's do this by adding another layer yet again, and then add it on top of the reflection pass here. And you can see as soon as we've done that, it is getting silky smooth. Small disclaimer here, inside of the denoiser you see an albedo and a normal input, and usually this can be input here to inform the denoiser for a better result, but right now as this version is an alpha version, this is not implemented yet. So for those of you who always wanted to have light passes and denoise them on their own to later add them together in the compositing stage, this is now possible in here. Oh, and one more thing, so to speak, the cherry on top. Let's clean up the notes a little bit to show you that a little bit better and clutter free. So let's just delete all of those notes and get rid of the duplicated layers. Here we go, and that. So we have our beauty on top. And then let's say we have a commercial and we have the brand colors for the background. So we change them a little bit, make them brighter again. And for example, a purple color here again. So bright purple, here we go. And this is our brand colors. But now we want to have aces on the object itself. So we get those nice tone mapped highlights. And this is now also possible. So let's copy the layer one more time here and set it to normal instead of add. Move it in here and get the object to the lowest layer. And then what we want to do is convert SDR to ACES. So this is what it's called. And then put it in here. And now you have nice ACES colors on your object. You also notice that ACES always makes objects a lot more contrasty and a lot darker. So I purposefully left the middle spot here free. So we again can use the adjust brightness in between here and make it a little bit brighter. For example, 1.5 or 2. Maybe 1.5 was a good idea. Here we go. And now we have a ACES tone mapped object on top of an sRGB background where the colors doesn't change if you add the tone mapping to it. As you can see, lots of potential here. If you're doing something fun with it, let me know. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram and tag me if you do something very nice with the knowledge provided in this tutorial. As a conclusion, 
I really find the notes a bit lacking. So for example, if you add or remove inputs, you cannot specify which one you want to add or remove or when you move them, you cannot move them up or down. I find this in the Blender version a lot better. Speaking of Blender, I am well advancing into Blender and it's going very well. So expect a couple of tutorials on the Blender topic. I'm thinking of doing a series that is called Blender for Cinema 4D users, where I go over my experience and the differences between those packages. Let me know down in the comments if you would like something like that. With that all said, this concludes this week's tutorial. Let's thank the people that made this one possible. Thanks so very much for my 50 Euro T subscribers, Chiels Augustinen and Leon Studio TV. Thank you both so much for having my back. Also, a huge thanks for my 15 Euro T subscribers, Abraham, AB Studio, Alessio De Vecchi, Alex Wilson, Bavana, BVR. Christian Grajewski, Computer Generated, Etienne Schmidt, Erbe Plus Academy, George Luna, Harish Pavaskar, Joy Chicoline, Just a Fricken, Chris Clemson, Ludger, Nico Straub, Part 1 of 2, Quark and Dang, Raiko, Render King Alessandro Bonchio, Reshock, Rory H, Shamus Johnson, Terry Wayne Ranson, Yasin Rupp, and Shibur Shang. Thank you all so very much. Yay, you made it to the end. I hope you learned something, and if you're actually still watching, thank you so very much for sticking with me that long. To celebrate this, let's post a level slider emoticon in the comments down below. With that said, I wish you an amazing start into this week, a good time and have fun multiplying notes. Bye!